All right, we got a Samsung French door refrigerator. All right, French door. Plain as it's not cooler in the fresh food section. When you open up these uh, refrigerators, the telltale sign, if you see that ice right there, and right there, you'll see ice all in there, caught up in there. Underneath here, it's gonna be water frozen up under here. And then you'll pull the bucket out. You also get this complaint about the ice maker freezing up. What's happening is water is getting ice makers freezing up, so water is getting not water. Air is getting in. You see the flashlight? Let me get this zoom it out. You see the my light? You see all that light coming through there? That crack is all the way around there. I, I usually put you have to put silicone all the way around there, the back, up the sides, and along the top. And I even put some right there, and I go inside. We're going to talk about that in a second. But to get this working, like I said, get the ice bucket out. Take the bottom tray out. Take the crisper drawers out. And then take this. This one pops up, and it goes right here. Take these drawers off. I normally watch and see how I do it. I count one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six down. That's how I do my lift it up. Get some ice on this one heavily crossed. Lift it up and pull it out. Put these to the side. Same with these. Lift these up, put them to the side. Alright, to take this thing off. That's the oil thing. If you look on the side, there's a little push button on the side on that side. And there's one in there on that side. I'm gonna push these two together, squeeze it, and lift this up. And slide it forward. Take this off. Yeah. If you want to find out what codes you have in the beginning, you know this one, the top one on the left, the top one on the right, hold it to it at the same time. Let's do it. Same time. Hold down 10 seconds until they blink. See like that? And then let it go. It'll tell you the codes. 22C, 25C, 39C. 22C is a fresh food fan. 25C is a fresh food defrost sensor. Thermoset. 39C is the ice maker. All right, just remember those codes. It'll go back by itself when it's finished. The beeping that you hear, because I got it in defrost. I always put it in defrost before I start. To do that, you can hold these two down. The freezer and the lightning button. See right here. You got it done at the same time. There you go. 1001, 1002, 3, there you go. Then you hit this down. You do it until you see RD. Keep hitting it and see RD. RD is refrigerated defrost. So the refrigerated dog. FD is freezer defrost. And they'll do both of them. Put it on RD. You let it start defrost. You should start defrosting that thing if it's working fine. Why is, why is defrost now? We can go behind the back and clean up the keys. Also, now's a good time to turn your steamer on. All right, so you get back there. There's some screws back here. There's a screw right there. There's screws, fill up screws all along the back. It's like one, two, three, four, five. One at the bottom right there, and then one right there at the bottom. Let's take those out. Once you get the screws out, what you're looking for are these little tubes right here. There's so two tubes right there, and there's one right there. Pull these tubes just straight. Just pull them straight, straight down. I'm gonna get this out. Get this one straight down and this one right here. Same way. You can take all this down. What we're doing is we're gonna take it to the sink. 
inside these get clogged up. So we take these to the sink and clean them out. But this dude, this pops off. So what happens is these get clogged up in here. They get clogged up. So I clean them. You see that little, you see that little, you see that little gash in the middle right there? In between it right there? I know they take my flat cut screw down. And I break it open like this. Okay, so take my screwdriver. Make sure you see what I'm doing. Let me take my screwdriver. And I push it up. That way, it's open like that. And I take this to the sink and clean these out. They get clogged up. So I break all of them, do all three at the same time. You see? Clean them all three of them. See? All three is clean. Take these to the sink and I clean. I run water down here and I just do it like this to clean this out. I'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's clean. I just push this back in here. Like that. I normally take all this to the sink, but I put it back in and you just slide it back in there. The way I do it, just stick it back in there. You see? Do the other ones. Do the whole look at the whole side. The whole side goes downward, so it gotta come on this side. Just remember that. Then let's just stick it right there. And right here, the third one. This one just flies on top of that thing like that. The black end just goes in this one. That's it. Put this one back. Yeah. All right, now you put your cover. Put the cover back on. Put your screws back in. We're done back here. Alright, now we can unplug the controller. Okay, can I meet you back in the front? Alright. Here's the fun part. The fun part is you gotta take this cover off. It's not it won't always come off easily. This one right here looks like it's gonna be a little challenging because I can see the ice coming. So you got three screws around here. One, two, three, and you got one behind this cover. Get one behind this cover. Let's pop this cover off. This thing really frozen up. This thing always pops off. So what I'm gonna do is run some steam across some of this real quick. So I won't break nothing. Steam off. Let's see if this cover come off now. Let's just see that screw back there behind that cover. So those one, two, three, four screws come out. The middle one's a longer, it's a longer screw. So take the one out of the middle. bar comes out. See that bar? It comes out. That screw ain't loose all the way. Keep your hand on that bar if you don't want it to fall and break this glass. Hold on. Right. So you sit that bar down right there. 
Yeah, there's nothing enough hole in this cover but the ice. So let's see how, we, how, how lucky we get. The way I always do is I always start from the bottom right here. When I pull back, it's a foam back there. The reason why I start from the bottom because I had the defrost going, remember? And that heater should have been on, melting some of the ice at the bottom. Because the heater comes down to the side and it comes around the bottom. And it drains. So I had that heater on, hopefully. It melts some of the ice. I can this glass this come off easily. So I'm going to take it from the bottom, pull it back towards me, and reach behind here. I'm trying to grab that foam. You see how I'm doing that? The only thing holding this ice. Right here. Alright, we got to I get back here. Alright, you see? Basically, I'm just coming behind here, right? Back there, there's a foam. I'm trying to reach behind that foam with my finger. We got a little tool. Try this for the first time. I'm gonna see if this works. Little hook tool right here. To get back there behind that phone. Nope, that ain't work. So what I normally do is try to get my finger behind that phone. I'm trying to bend the phone down. But I'll show you here in a second once I get it off. But let me take a second and get behind this phone and get this cover off. But right now I got this up and I got the phone at the bottom up. I'm gonna take my fingers back here and get this and I'm gonna lift it. So give me a second. So basically I was I was grabbing my fingers back there and I'm lifting it. If you lift it away, you see what the ice is hitting? The fan is hitting all that ice up there. So the fan is locked up. And it's hitting all that ice. Alright? When I see something like this, the coals is clean, that means. Course is clean because I had a defrost on a while ago. It melted all that ice down here. That's a good sign. But all that up there frozen mainly because the issue we about to fix today. Alright, so now we got this cover off. It's got connections over there to the left. We gotta loop these two connections. There's two wires, one right here, one right here. It's obviously it's frozen over, so I'm gonna take my steamer and get some of the ice away. This blue one, pull that harness, and just take it off. Everything is different. Pull that one off, and get the blue one. Alright, now I'm going to take this thing off. So, what I was pulling on, I was to get this cover off, I pulled this, this bag. The plastic part back and I took my fingers back here and bent this down so I can reach in here this piece right here to grab it so I can get a good grip on it I'm trying to get a good grip on here let's try it back so I can get it off that ice but when you ready to put it back on all I gotta do is bend that back you know put that phone back in there and bend that back right. if you at home you just want to defrost the whole refrigerator for several days you can do that that's what we're gonna take our uh, hot water and we're gonna put in the sink. We're gonna get all this ice out. Get all this ice out. We gotta take these stand off. Yeah, take these four take these four screws. Take this stand out and get all that ice. They got that stand locked up. Take all that. You gotta get all that. We're gonna do that in a second. We'll come back to that. And here, now all we gotta do now is take our steamer and just get all this ice off. You can use a hot hair dryer, whatever you got at the house. But I'm gonna use my steamer and I'm gonna get all this out. There's some ice down here. We better change, we're gonna change it as part of the problem. This drain clip right here. But it's ice down here. We're gonna clean all this ice out. It should go down easily now because we cleaned that tube in the back already. So now I'm just gonna take my steamer and I'm just gonna steam all this off. Steam all this off. Everything, get everything thawed out. So I'll be back. Alright, that's how I defrosted. I got all the ice off, all the coils. I set and held my steamer down that steamer down that hole, drain hole. Drain hole. 
until I saw it, the toilet bowl flush. Now I'm about to see here. And since I'm steaming already, I'm gonna I'm gonna steam this ice baker. I've normally use my uh, extension. Come on. Use my extension. And I just steam everything off of my extension all in there. Alright. We're gonna do that now. Alright, I'll be right back. Alright. So now we're just gonna evaporate a cover. We're gonna take these through uh, four screws out. Should be four of them. That 22C error code that we was getting was this fan error. I don't think nothing, nothing has never, this fan rarely ever goes bad. It, it just get frozen up like this. So I just clean this out, get all that ice away from everything. This is why we take it off. All this is just ice. All this is ice. And it's down in there too. Down these holes in there. I just run hot water from the sink on all this. Even on this. This is DC voltage motor. So I just, run, I just get all this ice off and run hot water. All this ice on out here. I just clean all this. So I'm going to run hot water on here and get everything clean. And I'll show you when I finish. The reason why we run it down these holes down here. Because it's holes. It's for these. Before these holes, the water gonna come through there. That's how you know it's running. All right, let me clean this up with some hot water and I'll be right back. All right, I put everything back in. Got the ice out of the fan. Now let's mount this back. Put this back in. No, we're not ready to put this back in, I'm sure. Let's do the repair. All right, two things I do is I take this sensor off. In order to do that, that black thing that's just glue tape, I just grab it. That's just off the coil. I just pull it off that tape. So that's right there. There's usually a zip tie sometime in here. Here there is one right there. Cut that zip tie off. I pull that side cutters. I left my side cutters. I'm gonna use my side cutters. So just cut that zip tie off. And then take this, I'm taking this harness, this, this off. There's a red one, red clip right there. One right there. I just lift it up over that thing. I just grab it sometimes, just pull it off. Same with this one. Red clip, just get it off. You got to get the red clip. Now you can take your harness off. Grab, push the button on the side and pull it out. Right. So I'll take this off. I take the um, I take the thermistor out of this clip. Watch this. Just just pull it out. It just pulls out. It just pulls out. Pull it out. Get rid of that. Get the new part. Put it back in there. All right, it's back in there. All right, instead of clipping right there, I always clip on the output. So put it right here. So now you got an output. I run, I route that wire. I leave the holes like that. I come behind there too, just to get it out the way. Put it right in there. Man, that's that right there. Sometimes I even take some of this tape and just put it right there, but that ain't going nowhere. It's clipped right on there, good. I put these back in here, the way it goes. Let's see how it goes. You just stick it in there. Stick it in there. Just push it. And it clips in place. I think that same on the other side. How important are these red clips? Sometimes it might not make it back in. But I'm going to show you the right way to do it now. So that's that. That's good on there. So now for this, you gotta cut that little. Alright. So 
You gotta cut that drain clip off. The way you do it, take it out that hole like I'm doing right here. Like I said, I normally use my side cutters. So what I'm gonna do is grab it and I normally break it with my side cutters. I don't have my side cutters, but that's what I'm doing. I'm just breaking it. Trying to break that rivet loose. And try not to drop anything in that hole down there. So if you want, stick, stick a bag or something just to catch. Catch anything. So I'm gonna fall. And all I'm doing is twisting it all, trying to break it loose. It comes so much easier with your, with your side cover. There you go. Break that off. Pull the rest off. That's it. Train clip removed. Now, we got to use the upgrade clip. So, we upgrade, upgrade this clip. So, the way this thing works is put it down in the hole first just to make sure because sometimes these holes I think they don't let it go down far enough like it is right now I just got a feeling when I clip around that thing it's not going to go all the way down in there so I take my side cutters and I cut just a little bit piece off that right there So I just cut a little bit off the end, just a little bit. Now let's try it again, test it. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna go down. That's gonna go over it. Here. So I go behind it. So what I do is kind of bend this a little bit like that. So I can just that way I can loop it around. Pull it, pull it forward just a little bit. Alright, everything's back in, the screw back in. That screw back on the side to plug it back in. Now it's ready to plug in. There's a seven minute delay on these Samsung. So what I do is I plug it in. I let the uh, thing run its course. Then I just do my little FF this time. Not RD, but FF. I hold it down. 1001, 1002, And I hit it again, FS. And I go back and I immediately unplug it. Wait about five seconds, four, three, two, one. And I plug it back in. Then I step my stopwatch to seven minutes. So I know it takes seven minutes for that compressor to kicks in. So now this is when you take your seven minutes and this is where you put all your, your drawers and cabinets, everything back in. You got seven minutes. Clean the water up underneath here. Doing your seven minutes because it's usually water up under here. So dry your water up. Ask the customer for a towel and dry the water up. Dry everything up. And wait. Right now, the ice maker, as you can hear, is activated. But it's not going to finish up. Eventually, that's going to stop. But it's not going to fill it with water. What I do is set that blue button right there to the side. As soon as the ice maker stops working after the initial power up, as soon as it stops, I come and hold that button down. We're going to do it in a second. But let's just put all the shelves back in and dry this water up. All right, let me show you this shelf. I forgot about this one. To put this one back in, just slide it so it's underneath there. Underneath that one, just sit it down in place. But now you got to line this up, the filter. Just click in place. Slide it up. Just come down here at the bottom. Push down to the leaky. See how I did? So it clicks in place. Now it's in there. Now you put your crisper drawers back in, all your shelves back in.
Note that the defrost mode will continue to run until you unplug the refrigerator or you command it to turn off. To turn it off, you will use the same command to get back into the forced modes by pressing and holding the two buttons for 8 seconds. Once you have this done, the FD mode will pop back up. Press the middle right button once to cycle to the commands to a blank screen. When you are on the blank screen, you will wait 15 seconds and the beeping will stop, which will also return the interface to its regular setting, putting everything back to normal. Now with the ice maker defrosted, or hopefully defrosted, we are now going to remove the ice maker itself. The way we are going to do this is press up on the tab that's up here, and then push up on the ice maker, and then pull out. Now this gap here is very small, and because of that, I am going to go ahead and use a pair of needle nose pliers to press up on it and then move the ice box out because my hands are fat. And there we go. When it came to this tab, we just had to press up a little bit and it kind of locked. So it's not too hard to do, um, but again, up and out. From here, we now have access to the ice maker and can repair it, test it, or take it apart as needed. Testing the ice maker is really straightforward, but the test button is somewhat hidden on this model. It is on the right side of the unit, while some other models may be underneath the ice maker. You'll need to hold down the rubber blue button for approximately 3 to 5 seconds to begin the ice maker test. If everything goes correctly, you'll hear an audible beep from the ice maker, indicating that it is proceeding now with the tests. To begin the process of removing the ice maker, you'll want to take out the small white screw that holds on the ice maker wire housing. Once the screw is out, you can then work to remove the panel that covers the wires. To remove this panel, you'll need to pull forward towards the front of the refrigerator and it should come off rather easily. At this point, we need to take out the ice maker wire harness to remove the ice maker. So it is important that we unplug the refrigerator from the power source or flip the breaker off. Once you have that done, you need to separate the ice maker wire harness. This was a very tight fit, so I decided to use a screwdriver to help remove the clip. You may also want to loosen up the wire trunk that goes to the harness because it is a very snug fit. Just remember to put the harness back in its place when you reinstall the ice maker. Continuing on, we need to remove the screw holding in the ice maker's air conduit, which is held in by just one screw. It's important to note that the screw holds the right side in, while the left side is held in by a small plastic retention piece. In order to prepare the ice maker for removal, you will need to use a flat bladed screwdriver to press in on this plastic conduit, then push the housing to the right to move it past this plastic clip. I found this part was really, really difficult because the plastic is extremely stiff and you're literally bending the plastic to get it away and around this piece. Moving the plastic allows the bottom of the air tower to drop on a hinge, exposing the refrigeration line to the ice maker. You'll need to use a screwdriver and gently pull down on the refrigeration line to ensure that it won't snag on the ice maker during removal. You don't need to bend the line very much and make sure you're very, very gentle on these steps as not to damage the line or the inner grommets on the ice maker as it's all very delicate. Lastly, to remove the ice maker, we will press and hold on a retention button on the ice maker and then pull the ice maker forward slightly to remove the unit. You may have to wiggle it a little bit to get it out, but this may be the easiest part of the video. Once out, you can inspect the ice maker as needed or... Alright, once you pull that thing down, this out the way, this will come down. It's not moving out because it's still a lot of ice right there, so let me take my steamer. Steam it out and get this down, this cover off. It's frozen in there. I'm gonna be steaming, put my steamer in this hole right here. Steam back there and get that. Once I get this cover down, I can grab this button up here and pull the ice maker back. I'm gonna show you that in a second. Alright, now that I got that loose, I'm gonna, like I said, this comes down. I'm gonna try to break some of that ice loose back there. Man, what I'm working, trying to do is get this bar right here that I'm on. This bar gotta come down under the you see these three little things up there. I can't see it. Let me see my flashlight. I hope it don't glare. Yeah, you see those three little things? See the bar? It normally sits up in there. It normally sits up in there. The bar is normally up on there. So I just push the bar down under there. Alright. I'm trying to get this down. 
I gotta take this ice maker. I'll take this ice maker out. Let's see if it gonna come down. There's still a lot of ice in there. Let's grab this. Put my fingers right here. I hear that I'm pulling this way. I'm pushing this down. I'm grabbing and I'm pulling. I'm pushing down. I'm pulling at the same time. Let's see how that did. It just slides right on. This thing was completely frozen. We're gonna take and thaw all this out. We're gonna thaw it out too. When we start thawing though, all that back there is frozen. The air supposed to come through this. It's the hole. It's supposed to be a hole. It's supposed to be a hole right there. Let that fan air because I'm gonna just to hold my steamer and I'm just gonna steam all through here. Melt some of that ice. I gotta pull this auger out. All right, now we got the ice maker out and we thaw a lot of that ice off. Gotta take that auger out back there. So, what we do is push that down again, loose that connection right there. Just push it, push it in, push it down, get that loose. And I usually grab the auger like with two fingers, right around the auger, that metal part right there. I take that little my flashlight. Like that. I take that little thing at the bottom. At the bottom in the middle, right underneath the arc where I'm pointing at it. And I take my thumb, lift that up, lift that up while I'm pulling. Lift it up and pull. You see what I'm talking about here in a second when I pull it out. So I got it, I just pull. Got the auger, I pull it out. What I was doing was I was lifting, trying to get the good camera angle. I was lifting this thing up. See that with my thumb? That's what I was lifting. I was lifting it up to get it out that hole and I was pulling. Watch your evaporator coil thing. Move, just push it up a little bit. Line, watch the copper line just to push it up a little bit just to get this out. I normally take this to the sink and run water down that hole. You see that hole down there? Make sure there's no ice in that hole. I clean the ice out. Next thing I do, I take all this for ice. There's normally a lot of ice up underneath there. There's, there's a fan. Reach up underneath there. Back there. I don't know if you can see that hole. I'm trying to point up to it. That hole right there, up there, is usually clogged up with ice or so just Reach back there, clean that ice out. That hole back in the back, the one at the bottom left, the black circle hole. I run my steamer down that hole after the drain hole. I just make sure the water's draining out there. Run that steamer down there for a good little bit. Get all your ice up in here and dry this whole container up with your napkin. Then we're going to start our silicone. Basically, with the silicone, long story short, I'm going to start in the back right there. I'm going to run along the back wall. I'm going to come along this side all the way up here. Over oh, down here with silicone. So I'm gonna run my bead of silicone all up here, all down here. Hey, if you ever caught before, you know. I run my silicone all along the bottom, along the back wall right here, and along the sides, along the side up here, and along the top, the top, all the top. That whole entire crack up there, I run my silicone. And I stop right there, right here in the corner. I'm gonna show you real quick. I'm gonna show you. I ain't gonna be able to do it in camera. Basically, how I get in here, I get in here like this. I just run it. Squeeze around my silicone. That's how I'm doing. I ain't gonna be able to do it with the camera. I'm just gonna do it. And then, if you caught before, I'm gonna do it. And then, I'll show you the finished product. All right, I'll be right back. All right, I got my. Silicone, I can't see it. There we go. I got me a bead of silicone all in there. Probably can't see back there. It ain't pretty, but it's all on the that wall. Got some right here, some right here, got some right here, all down there, around the back, 
and we're on the top, and we're on the top. To put silicone on, seal that whole container. Then, get a slight ice maker, slight auger ice maker back in. And we're technically done with this repair. Get everything back together, we're gonna start the refrigerator. Slide it back there, and it click in place. You heard that? Put your connection back in. There it is, it in our channel. All right, this ice maker, basically, it slides up in there, so in between there, it slides in there, over that coils in there. And you see up there, those two things, it's basically clipping those two things up there. So slide it in. As we push this up, slide it in. There we go, push it back and clip it in place. That's it. Push this up. Over there and get your screw back in. Do I always get my ice maker to push back in? I don't always do that. I just get my screw in. Push this up so I can get my screw in. Connect that. Put the cover back on. I'm going to do all that and I'll be right back. Alright, everything is back in. The screw back in. That screw back on the side. The plug is back in. Now it's ready to plug in. There's a 7 minute delay on these Samsung. So what I do is I plug it in. Let the uh, thing run its course, and I just do my little FF this time, not RD, but FF. I hold it down. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand five, thousand four, thousand five, and I hit it again. FF. Then I go back and I immediately unplug it. Wait about five seconds. Four, three, two, one, and I plug it back in. Then I step my stopwatch to seven minutes. So I know it takes seven minutes for that compressor to kick in. So now this is when you take your seven minutes and this is when you put all your, your drawers and cabinets, everything back in.